uh, a cool thing that I probably don't have time to do, but I like the idea of doing, we could make, instead of, um, instead of passing in individual argument, uh, sorry, individual coefficients here, we could pass in a list of coefficients and we could iterate on that list of coefficients. I'm not gonna do that right now uh, because I want to show two more examples of this. And the examples are not gonna be significantly different from what we're seeing right here. All right, so uh, before, before moving on, are there any questions about this? Um, I think there's something in the chat. Not a dictionary, right. Yep, it was not a dictionary. Uh, yeah, are there any questions on this? Hey, Tobio, this is Keyshawn. Um, hey. So for the use of a dictionary versus, say, an accumulator, for this case, what I'm taking home is that, you know, for accumulator, if we're just looking at uh, floats or, or, or integers, that accumulator will always start at zero and go to some infinite value, whereas a dictionary, you would have these keys that can go from minus infinity all the way to infinity. So a uh, couple, couple of small corrections. Um, an accumulator might start at one. So accumulation doesn't have to be uh, addition, or it doesn't have to be additive. It can be multiplicative. Right. And uh, there's, a, there's a function we're gonna write that will be uh, multiplicative. Uh, it will have a multiplicative uh, accumulator. But okay. yeah, in this case, our dictionary is our accumulator. This is still the accumulator pattern. Um, it's just we didn't include dictionaries when we talked about accumulators because we have a whole unit on dictionaries that we're going to release, um, I think before Saturday. That's but if you just use a traditional accumulator, you couldn't, you couldn't have an index less than zero. Your index would have to start at zero and go to some positive value. Um, Whereas if you use yes, a dictionary, here, you, could have, you could have your sort of quote unquote index start at any value you want and end at any value you want. Yes. yes. Um, and, and you can think about it as like, well, a key, when we're looking at this, this key does not represent, um, it doesn't necessarily re represent a value in order. Uh, whereas lists are, you know, you know I, could, I could name these, I could make them strings. Oh, okay. Um, I I, they could be anything, right? Well, they can't be anything, but they can be anything that's immutable. Um, right. And often, often they are strings, actually, because when you're working with dictionaries, um, you could you can bring in um, a data structure called JSON, and a lot of the internet is served with JSON, right? And JSON is a dictionary. It's essentially the exact same data structure that we're seeing for a dictionary. And so you read in a JSON dictionary. Uh, most of the all the keys are strings. Everything in it is a string. Mm -hmm. um, and it, the order is not explicit. And that's what I was saying, order is not guaranteed in a dictionary. In fact, looking at this print function, uh, I should, in all cases, I should put sorted around this. That's just, okay. it's actually what I should do. Um, because I can't guarantee um, in, in this analysis, I can't guarantee that negative 10 is gonna come before negative six. Uh -huh. It okay. just happens to. Right. In this case, I just can't guarantee it. Um, the the other way we could do this, we could do this with parallel lists, if if we wanted to. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, then we're declaring two lists, we're returning two right. lists, we're always right. dealing with these two things. Um, but but we could get the same effect, or we could have a list of tuples, which is uh, like I said before, that's what that's what this items method gives us. It actually gives us a set of tuples, um, and maybe just to verify that, I'm going to print this. Um, I think I have to print the list of it. I think it's a generator. Um, oh, oops. Yeah, so notice here, this is a list of tuples. And we could do, you know, uh, so we could return a list of tuples. We could return parallel lists. Uh, dictionaries are just really convenient. And they're really performant, too. They, um, they're way, way faster than lists in terms of um, accessing things, in terms of um, uh, larger processes. So 
Um, not to compare them too much, they kind of occupy different spaces, but. Hey, Tovia. Yeah. Uh, Andrew here. Um, uh, just uh, uh, to add something else, uh, I think Neha did one of these questions like uh, in terms of a cubic or quadratic equation where okay. she used the enumerate function um, because, you know, the enumerate returns like essentially an index yep. and the element. I think the index was used as either a coefficient or the actual polynomial. I'm not it was probably used as the exponent. Yeah. What I would do is enumerate. Yeah. That's a very inverse. simple way. Yep. Totally. I mean, you yeah. can do that as well, correct? Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and if we wanted okay. to do that, um, you know, if we made this just a, a list and we wanted to say, um, you know, for, uh, what are these? These are coefficients in yeah. uh, enumerate. Um, let's do uh, reverse of list. Yeah. Then we could say uh, we want to um, we're going to need an accumulator here. So some, I'll just do some. So this is going to be some is going to get, um, oh, I need, uh, power. Oh, pow, power. And we'll do coefficient times X times, uh, to, uh, sorry, to the power. And I think, unless I'm mistaken, I think that's, I think that's fine. Um, yeah. And then it's no, uh, what's my error here? No, no error. Um, so let's keep negative five there and let's make this a list. Oh. Interesting. Um, there is an error. Okay, so uh, this is a list of coefficients. We probably we probably want to include the intercept in that. Right. So is is and just to I just wanted to get a good gauge of this. Um. So the index is um. You said being used as the uh, is that being used as a coefficient or the polynomial? The index is being used. Oh. Oops. A whole bunch of little errors I got going on. Okay, that works. I believe that works. <laughs> yeah. Um, without you know looking at it closer. Uh, so we're using the index. This is the index power yeah. here. Uh, we're using the power to exponentiate x, and then we're multiplying it by the coefficient. Okay, gotcha. The sum underscore uh, Clark mentioned uh, that that can also be. In equal to zero, it can also be in the form of an accumulator. That's a way to hold. Yes. So yeah. some okay. some underscore here is our accumulator. Yeah. Well, no. As actually, he said, as long as it's equal to zero, it can be like an accumulator. He said that the zero thing is what would make it into an accumulator. Uh, zero or one? Uh, okay. Not necessarily. Uh, accumulator. An ac you can start an accumulator. Yeah, it can be like an empty string or an empty list, but he said zero is also, he, he said it can be like, I guess like a placeholder or something for an accumulator. That's what it is here. Yeah. Oh, okay. Understood. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Cool. So, you know, we could take the same approach. Um, I could go through and, you know, correct these things. I, I do think this is interesting though. This is kind of a cool construct. It shows how kind of amazing Python is. You just reverse the list, enumerate it, and you, you know, you have a very simple sort of uh, algorithm for generating the uh, y value. Cool. So uh, 